Hey, welcome once again to BG's Gospel Show. Uh, the best fun <laughs> show in town. Yay! Hello to the billions view. Uh, the, the billion viewers out there. Faith. Yes, I'm so uh, always hum, hum, humbled to to um, appear before your screens. Um, uh, to to bring you an encouraging word from God. Um, and I know it's going to be uplifting, uh, and I pray it's a word in season for many of us out there. And so here it goes. Well, I'm going to talk about a suffering in faith. Um, not in a bad suffering, but well, it's, it's going to, you're going to relate. Um, it's going to be a quick one, but uh, let me begin with some context. I remember one time when I had a headache, and uh, it was so bad. It was so bad. I tried confessing the scriptures and didn't work, and of course I opted for medicine. So I to get this whole dosage right i get the dosage of um headaches panadol i take everything and even after the dosage getting done guess what the headache was still there so i was frustrated and i said you know what even when i've put my trust in the medicine it has not helped at all so <laughs> i went back to plan a faith and i kept on telling myself you know what by his stripes you were healed by his stripes you were healed by stripes you were healed and the headache eventually disappeared let me talk about finances for another second there's so the many times yes i have been financially low and uh well i don't want to die in my own movie so i get these contacts that i know cannot fail to help and i'm calling them up telling them to help out yet there was a conviction in my spirit by the Holy Spirit telling me I said you shall lend donations and on, but I'm like, you will understand. God, you will understand. Guess what? <laughs> Even the people I expected to help me out, they were not able to. Now, that's when it's a big, fat blow in your face. You just have to go back and be like, you know, I could have been humbled. I shall lend donations on board. So what does the suffering mean? It means... um. Even when it's the only option left, it can't work. It you you it's it's a no go. It's it, you can't you 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 are firm. You are firm to believing it that you will learn to nation and not borrow. Check God has told you and not borrow, because guess what? Many people have borrowed and then they end up in debt and then it's a whole life process thing. You you know you give up so so many things for surety. If you remember, in Kings there's that uh, widow who whose husband was a prophet. And when you know when she got when he got so broke, he even gave up his sons for for surety, like as collateral. I'm like, how bad must have it been? Did you get the point? So us um, going out of scriptures, us counter um, countering scripture, say say borrowing. It's 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 a loss of trust in God's word. It, it's it's us telling. Um, it's like we're trying to say God is a man. He's lying. Yet he says I'm not a man that I should lie. So. Yes, there's going to be faith, but you can see my point that I'm trying to stress, that suffering is going to come with it, that you are doing badly off. You know, for example, me, yes, I've fallen, um, I'm getting head headaches again, and every time I try to go to the medicine, I always remember that example that, you know what, even the medicine failed. You know what, last time when I went out, even this guy was not able to help me out, even this lady was not able to help me out, so I'm going to stand my ground. Yes, it, you don't need to show it. You don't need to tell people. Of course, part of the things that someone's going to randomly um, text you and ask you, "Hi, are you okay?" And then you're going to be tempted to say, "Oh, I'm dry." And then even after all that weeping, they're still going to, "Oh, sorry, God is going to come through." And you're like, "What?" I expected you to say, "Here's some twenty thousand shillings." So that's the whole point. Like we've reached the end of it, and still we we there's a way God humbles us to you know return. So. We always have to trust that uh, by his stripes we are healed. We have to hold fast the confession of our faith. I think that's Hebrew 10.23 or 10.25. Hold fast that even when you're running, Lord, you tell yourself, I will lend to nations and unborn. Nations are a big thing. They are a big thing. If indeed you're going to walk by faith and you're envisioning yourself lending to nations, there is no way a lender to nations is going to borrow. There is no way it's going to borrow. So you can even borrow that picture from the future and bring it to the present. So there's no way I can borrow because, I mean, I'm a rich guy. I'm lending to nations. 
you know you have to tell yourself these are this is should this ought to become standards by which we live uh, and not just merely reminders when he says you're the head and not the tail you have to understand that you have to live that way you have to be the head in business the head, the head at school don't be tempted to um go south like the rest are doing you're, you're the head and not the tail you're above he says above only and not beneath so when maybe you've been body shamed or you've been called ugly or dark or whatever you, you have to remind yourself that you are above only and not beneath and you don't need to explain yourself so a season may come and you're questioning if the tithe you are taking in is bringing returns a season may come and you're saying but god you said you wanted give give and shall return multiply right these are the times the student compromise you know his word shall not return void so if you have said you give and shall return understand it's going to work out sooner or later tomorrow maybe perhaps next week but do not think that the truth is going to stop working because of your circumstance because of what seems to be happening to you that is suffering and of course you know Paul warned us that we're going to suffer suffering the same sufferings with Christ and I'm like oh, that better be not oh yes it is <laughs> it is because you know that, that that's the tricky point that this suffering is like how Jesus suffered in the desert right he has all this power he's starving okay of course he's fasting but he's starving and then of course the devil comes and says ah turn the bread into stone but those who didn't know the, the, the bread represents bread of life that's the new testament into stone that law he was like trying to turn this new testament back into old testament and jesus was wise enough not to do it so you have to understand otherwise you're going to end up compromising things that are bigger uh than now uh, than 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 you you're going to end up asking for for soup and then someone's going to say give your birthright for it and you're going to give it in for soup soup you have to you you have to embrace some of these sufferings, my friends. And of course, Jesus had to say it is written. You know, it is written that you know a man shall not live by bread alone. You know, he's suffering. He's he's hungry, but then he decides to say, "But it's written, I will not live on bread alone, but I, by every word, every word." So he's literally walking by faith and not by sight. So what part of your sufferings are going to be being stupid, acting like you have money yet you do not? But the Bible is saying, walk by faith and not by sight, you know. But in all of this, there's a consolation. There's a consolation to this. Um, part of this suffering is going to be um, uh, it's endurance. Yes, you're like God. Um, you got you. You just have to hang in there because God is building your endurance. He's building your. He knows what he's doing. I'm just <laughs> sharing um, what I've gone through. But there is another not suffering per se, but. Yes, could be suffering. For example, the perfect scripture I found for this was Habakkuk 3, 17 to 18. It says, though the fig tree may not blossom, no fruit be on the vines. Yeah, imagine you've planted the fig trees, they're not blossoming. Your fruits are not coming on the vines. Though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I, I will rejoice in the lord i will join the god of my salvation so habakkuk is saying you may not have um olives you, you've planted stuff it's not coming through that the, the fields are not yielding any food the flock is being cut off the herds are in this there are no herds there are no cows in the stalls you bought you no know, gods you've you've given tithe you, you you've you've given to, to people you've given people gifts and and they and you feel like the oh, of course the bible says give and don't return anything but there's this thing whereby you always okay personally from my experience i used to think that if i give someone a gift at least i expect them to give me a gift on my birth but i've learned more that you know what it not, may not always happen that way because when you give um because the bible says you, we reap what we so it didn't say you reap where you sow right so what i'm trying to encourage you is um yes you've given to people you've given gifts to people you've given out money but there's now you're like god but god why am i suffering right now what 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 is, is your word lying right now can can we be can we be real for for for, for a second i've tithed i i have dedicated my children to you you say my children will be taught of the lord look at the media so habakkuk is coming from this point nothing is working out but then 18 says, he said, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will join the God of my salvation. This scripture has really carried me through when everything seemed to be failing. Everything seemed to be not returning. And yes, you know, your business is not bringing the returns that you expected. 
you know, the green is not, you know, the Bible says, uh, you shall be like a tree plant by the earth's water, which shall bring forth fruit in his season. And you're like, but God, where is the fruit? Practical, I don't see anything. You know, maybe you're saying, God, marriage is taking long, yet you said you would satisfy us well, it's still early. Regardless of all this, Habakkuk is saying, yet rejoice in the Lord. Joy in the God of your salvation. So when everything else is failing, there is an antidote for you. There's a consolation for you. Rejoice in the Lord. 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 Everything is taking long, but rejoice in the Lord. Just say, Lord, I'm happy. I'm, 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 I give thanks. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. I, I, I'm glad I'm here. I'm, I'm glad I'm on TV. <laughs> I may not be on national TV yet or international TV yet, but I'm glad. I'm glad I have the technology. Just get those small things that can make you glad that can bring joy back inside you and but why why i asked myself why god why did you say joy why is joy the only solution for this of course uh, romans 14 7 says that the kingdom of god is righteousness peace and joy yes joy but then also isaiah 12 3 says that um um with joy we shall draw from the wells of salvation now if you read Haggai too it talks about uh the vision being for an appointed time and it says, though it may tarry, it will surely come to pass. It will not lie. And uh, you remember God telling me that patience, the purpose of patience is for you to endure until the appointed time for the vision that you wrote on the tablets. To endure until the time when your giving is going to come back multiplied. To endure until the time when the tithe is going to provoke the windows of heaven to pour out down. But where is the patience going to come from? It is in the wells of the salvation. It's the wells of salvation. And it's joy that's going to help you scoop that patience out. And it will keep you going. Before you know it, you'll forget your losses. Before you know it, you'll forget how, it, how long it took for you to get there. Before long, you'll just be rejoicing at your eyes. Like you'll forget all about the shortcomings and the bad things you did along the way. And God will be your bedrock even in this simple suffering not so bad, but I know how it can feel at that point. Even Job himself said that though he may, though he may slay me, yet I will trust him. So I want you to move with the attitude of yet I, yes, um, it's taking so long, but yet I will. The, 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 the children are taking so long to come, but yet I will rejoice. Yet, 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 everything is going not as planned, but choose to rejoice in the Lord. Joy in the God of your salvation is your strength. He will make your feet like deer's feet and he will make you walk on your high hills so i pray this was encouraging um i always read this scripture to remind myself when things seem to be taking long not going as i planned and yet i know god is with me and he has never forsaken me and he will never leave me and somehow joy is going to engulf you it's going to envelop you. it's going to hug you and you just receive that peace and an assurance that it's it's going to be okay it's going to be okay it's going to be all right. You get through this and you'll be um, testifying soon enough. So, um, yeah, hang in there. God said he will not tempt us beyond what we can handle. So he knows you can handle whatsoever. It is building your endurance, your character, which is going to um, he's going to use to help millions out there soon one day. So hang in there. Uh, it's not going to be forever. Jesus didn't first. Uh, at some point, I mean, Jesus came out of the desert. <laughs> and he ate food but uh i know i know you understand uh i know some of you have been there but yet choose to rejoice in the lord may god minister to you um may he minister to you may he minister to you holy spirit may you touch everyone out there who needs this touch who who seems like they're suffering in the faith who who even those who are going to make the decision today um to stop borrowing, uh, to stop uh, trusting, I'm not, um, trusting medicine, even when sometimes medicine fails to work. May you teach them. I just, uh, I'm just a vessel, but may you teach them to the core, uh, to stand their ground and to believe in you, uh, to believe in you and to rejoice mostly when everything seems not to be going uh, the way they planned. And in the end, may you come through. Uh, may you come through like a mighty wind, like a rushing storm. May you come through and uh, double the standard and help them so that indeed that testimony shall be great. For this is the victory that overcomes the world, their faith. So as they suffer in their faith, Build them, build them, Lord, build them, build them. May they be like mountains, which cannot be shaken, but endures forever. 
Lord, these are your children. They are mighty in the earth. And they're going to come out stronger, bolder, stronger, bolder, stronger, bolder. In Jesus' name. Amen. I love you so much. God bless you. And I hope this was ministering to you. So, right, cheers and bye-bye.